Hello everyone, Van Merkel here. I want to give you an update on one of my favorite patients and one of my long-term patients. She's been a patient for 12 years. She's got, or she was uh, originally came when she had stage four uh, breast cancer and she has now gone on 12 years. And she first started with us as a patient in May of 2007 and uh, her breast cancer marker as of September 5th 2018 was 20.90, 20.9. Less than 38 is the clinical range, so she's nice and uh, well below that. So, a lot of people have, have good results, her numbers come down. I want you to know that we're doing a job and she's doing the job in keeping that number low. So, is she cured of cancer? No. I don't want you to think I have a cure for cancer. I don't have a cure for cancer. I don't have a treatment for cancer. Our goal is to get you healthy. We have cancer every day. Everybody has cancer every day. If I tested everybody out there for breast cancer, no one has zero because we're all fighting cancer every day. So when she first came in, just to review a little bit for if you've this is the first time you've heard this, this lady presented in May of 2007 with stage for breast cancer, basically diagnosed from a mammogram. They did a PET scan, found she had some hot spots. So it was stage four. Um, she started, came to me for a second opinion before she did anything medical, before any chemo, before any radiation, before any biopsy, before any surgery, anything. And I ran a blood test. Now the blood test is called the CA2729. That's the most common tumor marker for breast cancer in women. And as I just said, it was now down to 20.9. When she first came in to see me, that's the first thing I ran was that cancer marker. And it was at 185, which is extremely high, which correlates with her PET scan. It's truly metastasized stage four, which they figured it was from the, from the mammogram findings. They were so bad. And a PET scan pretty much confirmed the CH stage four breast cancer. And um, she started... She came to me for a second opinion. We started on a nutritional program. We did the testing. I'm going to go over some of those test results here in a minute. Uh, we went over the, uh, we did the testing. I started her on a special diet and a special vitamin protocol to help her body get healthier. She's 48 years of age, so she had lived all those years without, with, without any cancer out of control, but now it's out of control. We had to boost her immune system up and those numbers came down. Now, after she'd been on our program for two weeks, we tested her again, and that cancer marker dropped from 185 to 140 before any medical intervention. Before any medical intervention, it dropped 45 points. Wow. Within a month, it dropped from 185 to 78, and by three months, it was down to 35. It was below the clinical range. And we followed that all along, as you know, it's now 20. By the sixth month, she had her PET scan done, and all the hot spots in her body had disappeared. That's not the only case we've had like that, but it's pretty cool, isn't it? That all the hot spots indicating metastasis had gone away. Your body can fight cancer, and that's what we do. We get the body healthier. Now, for that three months of care, we did a significant amount of testing because we had to find out what was wrong with her system. What was out of balance, what's deficient, what's toxic. And when we analyzed all that, we knew exactly the direction to take and we started getting her fixing all these things. And as I tell everybody I talk to, if you get healthy enough, doesn't matter the name of the disease. And so we just fixed everything we could. Her anemia, the low vitamin D, the liver, uh, the low calcium, magnesium. We took care of all these things and her body got healthy. For three months of care, for that cancer marker to go from sky high, extremely high, 185 down to less than 30, only cost her $3,000. That was it. That was a total out-of-pocket cost. That included all the labs. Now this was 12 years ago. That included all the labs, all the vitamins, all the consults in our clinic at Take-Two Healthcare, and uh, $3,000. Now, Let's put that into context. After she'd been on our program, on the program I put her on, her SBN special diet and vitamins, for three weeks, 
The doctors want to do a biopsy. Now, I tell my patients never do a biopsy. You, do it. you either take it out or leave it alone. Most of these tumors are like a hornet's nest. They're not going to bother you don't, if you don't bother them. But if you start poking them, you're going to fire that thing off. And most cancer markers will elevate sometimes double or triple after a biopsy. Why would that be? So I told her not to do a biopsy. Either take it out or leave it alone. And since it's a breast, I thought it'd be easy to take out. So I told her, to, I told her no biopsy, take it out. So she went and had it done. She had a lump removed and they looked at three um, lymph nodes and all three were positive for cancer. So is that stage three or four cancer? It's already metastasized. Now, because all those, the, uh, the lump was cancerous and the lymph nodes were positive, the oncologist said that they need to do, um, let's see, radiation was immediately recommended for six weeks, followed with chemo. And they told her, if you do all the chemo radiation we want, do all the everything we want, you've got probably eight to 10 years to live which in Cotis thought was pretty good because for her stage four cancer, that is really good. Eight to, ten, eight to 10 years to live. Well, she's 48 years of age, trim, thin, looks awesome, takes vitamins, it was organic, uh, exercise, does everything right you can possibly imagine. And now the doctor's saying, you got stage four cancer. You follow my advice, you got eight to 10 years to live. In reality, what he's saying, Really, what he's saying, if you follow my advice, in 8 to 10 years, you'll be dead. And what's the quality of life she's going to have? And do you think she'll even live 8 to 10 years? Probably not. I mean, we all know people who've died within months, 2 or 3 years, with cancers not even as bad as hers. I know many women that didn't come see me. I hear them on the news, things like this. They get cancer at stage 1 or 2 and are dead within 3 years. So she'd like to come to me for a second opinion. Now, have I ever told her not to do chemo and radiation? No, I haven't. Here's a question I asked her the very first day I saw her. I said, um, Rachel, if you delay chemo and radiation one week, just one week, will I make any difference in the long-term outcome? That's all I ask, just one week. No, it's not. It's not going to make any difference if you got stage four cancer already, waiting one week. And so she gave me that one week. And in one week, the tumor marker, two weeks actually, tumor marker dropped 45 points. Pretty good, right? But does she still have cancer? So what do I tell her now? Yeah, give me another week. I've never told her not to do chemo radiation. You live and die by these numbers. In fact, it's not as important how high the number is, but the direction it's going. If the number is going down, you are winning. If it's going up, you're losing. That easy. It is that easy. Now, over the years, over the 12 years, oh, more than 12 years, she is perfectly fine, no chemo, no radiation, as healthy as anybody you know. And she's now 60 years old. Where would she be if she had chemo radiation? She'd be dead, wouldn't she? But anyway, uh, we've done this cancer marker, C2729, many times over the years. Many times, maybe 100 times. Okay, now before I go into the actual numbers, how much does this cancer marker cost if you go to your medical doctor? Well, generally it's going to run anywhere from $380 to $480 for that one blood test. You can get that done in an SBN member in our office for probably around $40. $40. This is 2018. It may go up a few, a couple of dollars here or there, but uh, 2018, it's right at $40. Now, she can order this test anytime she wants. And sometimes she'll go on a cruise and come back and say, I'm a little bit nervous. She wants to know where she's at. Because maybe sometimes during Christmas or vacations, that number will creep up to 24 or 25. Now, why does it go up to 24? Why does it creep up a few points if she gets off the program? Sugar feeds cancer. She gets off the diet, the number goes up. She finds out where it is. Ah, then she knows if she tightens up her diet, takes a few vitamins, they'll come back down. So is she cured of cancer? No. Do we have a cure for cancer? Don't have that either. But she knows that she has control over her own health. If she'll follow the proper diet, get tested, make sure she's under control, and takes the right vitamins, she can bring that number down and keep it under control. So is she going to die from breast cancer? No. Is she going to die with it? Yeah. But we're all going to have, we all have cancer, but it's not going to kill her. Now, some interesting things about her case. 
Um, like I said, she's already doing everything right. When I look at her blood test, her blood test looks pretty good. Okay, mildly anemic because she's vegan. Got low vitamin D, got low minerals, low protein, things that are, that are pretty common. But on the blood test, nothing really showed up as to why she got cancer. No, no really metabolic problems. She's not diabetic, which often leads to, to cancer. So there was nothing in the blood that really indicated why she got cancer. And uh, I've got the actual uh, lab here on where her most recent cancer marker is down to 20.9. Oh, that is so exciting. But one of the things we do, we do a hair test. You know, you can't diagnose from a hair test. You can't diagnose metabolic conditions, but you can see if they got heavy metals. Now, blue is the worst. Red, blue is code blue. Like in a medical setting, blue is code blue. Red is danger and yellow is warning. Anything that's clear or white is optimal. And so here on this hair test, her aluminum is extremely high. Aluminum is high and she has very high titanium. Now these down here are mineral levels and those, those are a little bit out of balance, but the high aluminum is a problem. But it's in the hair, which means she's being exposed to it and it's coming out. Now, uh, we also do our urinary toxic element challenge. It helps us to determine if there are heavy metals in your system that aren't coming out. Now when we tested hers way back 12 years ago, this was her first test right here. We see a high aluminum at the top which correlates with her hair test. So when she collected just six hours of urine, just six hours of urine, we see high aluminum which correlates with the hair. But really not much else shows up when we do just a urine test. Not much else shows up. But then when we used a special chelating agent, we saw extreme high levels of lead and high levels of mercury. In fact, that's one of the highest levels of lead we have ever seen. Highest levels we've ever seen. And I believe what's happening is we don't see the lead or mercury coming out on the hair test and we don't see it coming out on the urine. What's happening is lead mercury she's being exposed to is going into her body, but it's not going out. This lead mercury was so high, I believe it was putting a tremendous stress on her immune system such that the cancer got out of control. Now, if I'd have just thrown a few vitamins at her and changed her diet, but didn't take care of the extreme levels of lead and mercury, would we have gotten anywhere? I don't believe we would have. And you can see where we've tested her over the years and that lead has come down and the mercury's come down and actually got her healthier such that we're now actually seeing lead coming out the hair. Her body had impaired ability to efficiently eliminate lead and mercury. Your body needs magnesium and calcium and other minerals and vitamins as well as special nutrients and things that, that we use that assist the body in eliminating these heavy metals. And again, I'm going to say it again, her body, excuse me, had an impaired ability to efficiently eliminate lead and mercury. And that's what happens with a lot of people. Now, you might have cancer. You might have an autoimmune disease. You may have Parkinson's, Alzheimer's, something like that. And it is amazing in our culture today how many times people are trying to fight cancer, fight cancer, and they're missing the more more serious, maybe the underlying base of the problem that is suppressing the immune system, overburdening the immune system. So hopefully it's given you people, if you have cancer, or you're concerned about it, you have family or friends, and you're looking for answers, science-based nutrition doctors, this might be what you're looking for. My, my, my slogan is, take two weeks or two months to try a safe, natural option, because even serious problems sometimes have simple, safe, natural solutions. And that's what we did. We have got her under control, not cured, but where, where would her life be? Where would her family be? Her, her, all of her people that she has contact with, what would have happened if she had been on chemo radiation and she'd be gone today? So hopefully this helps. We'd love to help you. If you've got some health problems, have a good day. I'm Dr. Merkel.